In this episode, we are applying our ice and water shield. The purpose of the ice and water shield is to protect the roof from any ice dams or horizontal water that could eventually damage the roof. We're going to be applying Grace ice and water shield from GCP. whom very kindly provided all the materials completely for free for the installation on our roof. So let's get to work! It's been a while since we recorded that intro. Actually, we recorded that intro during uh, before winter. And the problem was that we were trying to rush and we were not able to install the ice and water shield before then because we were basically below four degrees C. But fortunately, we're now in spring and uh, we are above four degrees C, at least for a couple of days. And uh, we're going to be installing this ice and water shield. So let's begin by first uh, setting the first row of ice and water shield. We'll be uh, setting a chalk line just to make sure we're going straight. And then after that, that will be setting the uh, drip edge, which we'll be showing you a little bit later. So let's begin. So the prep work for the membrane is pretty similar to what we did with V2Thin on the foundation episode. The first and most important thing is find a surface that is flat, but mostly that it's clean. And that is because the backing paper, it's pretty delicate. And if it gets damaged, it's going to make your life more difficult during installation. And that's actually why you see us right here inside the house, even if it's dark, um, but that's the cleanest surface that we have. Okay, so now that you have the surface, I recommend you getting like a sacrificial board just so that you, that you don't damage the material below. And then the way I like to cut is I just have like a long uh, square. I put my hand on one side and my knee on the other, and then I just cut with the cutter. Um, with the cutter for this membrane, about two passes it's sufficient. With be too thin, it was a bit longer because it was thicker. And the other thing I have is if you have, especially if you have different measurements, Make sure that you mark the measurement that you just cut. It's just going to make your life so much easier. So here is a tip if you need to cut the membrane in half lengthwise. So you can use a ripcord, which is a feature of this product. So if you open it, you're going to see that there's like some thread in the middle. Sometimes you can just pull it with your fingers. If it's difficult to find, you can always use a cutter just, just to bring it up. And then what you do is you just grab that string. Actually, you can break this a little bit to make it easier. And then you just grab it and you pull it. And you'll see that it's going to cut the, the paper in half all the way to where you need it. This is also useful if you need to install the membrane in let's say a valley or other areas where you need to fold the membrane. You can uh, take like this half off, install it, and then the other half. We have now installed the drip edge, as you can see right here. Uh, you might see that there's a gap of, of about an inch, and that's on purpose. Uh, that's for two reasons. One, we have not installed uh, soft fascia yet. And second, it's very important to leave a gap so that any water that runs off the roof uh, doesn't climb its way back up through the uh, drip edge due to surface tension. So that's very important. There is a debate on whether the ice and water shield should go under or over the drip edge. The argument for putting it over is that it's going to cover this joint and water cannot get under the drip edge. The argument for putting it under is that when you apply the nails, they are going to be self-sealed. And also, if you have a very large ice dam, it could uh, go behind the drip edge and actually back up into the structure. So GCP recommends putting it under. However, check with your local uh, jurisdiction because it varies. Now, what we're going to do is we're going, we already have this under and we're going to apply another layer over this one. As you can see, we exaggerated here a little bit with all the nails. So the code recommends to have them every 12 inches, but we want to follow the Fortified program, which recommends having them every four. However, we got confused and we ended up <laughs> doing them every two. But well, this is pretty well inside, it's not going to go anywhere. Now what you need to remember when you install the ice and water shield is you need to start from the lowest point and then go up, because this way when you have the overlaps, it's going to follow the shingle pattern.
Some places to install the ice and water shield are eaves, rakes, and valleys. Also, by code, it is required to install uh, two feet from the edge of the wall horizontally. It is not clearly specified from what side, from the inside or the outside. So I would probably take the inside, the inside of the wall so that you end up with a, a little bit more ice and water shield. Um, on, in cold weather climates, it is recommended to install three feet or, uh, from the edge of the wall. But in our case, uh, we prefer to install the entire roof. Finally, if you're feeling uh, that you're going to end up with a place that's not safe, with, that you might get uh, ice dams, you can install double and that's perfectly allowed. So, yeah. So now that we are halfway through with the installation, it's a good moment to give you a few tips. So Grace has uh, two recommended methods of application. One is cutting to size and the other one is called the back roll method. And it's actually pretty nice. You pretty much put the roll, hold the backing paper with one hand and then you roll it and the membrane stays behind. So it's pretty convenient, but it's a matter of preference. Now what is important, it's the rules for installation. So if you have overlaps, for vertical overlaps like this one, you need to have at least six inches of overlap. And for the horizontal one, it's three and a half inches. And Grace makes this pretty easy because this is the three and a half inches with this line. And then they add this other dotted line, which accounts for the backing paper. So if you align your backing paper with this one, you're going to have the perfect overlap. show you the roof detail membrane. So this is part of the ice and water shield system, but somehow they don't advertise it too much and it's super cool. So think of it like a tape, it's nine inch wide and it has a ripcord, which is this little string that when you pull it, it cuts the paper in half. So it makes installation around corners super easy. So come, let me show you how we're using it up here. Here you can see the roof detail membrane already installed. So it's like a tape that we are using to protect the, um, the border of the ice and water shield and we can also use it to protect penetrations and such. Another thing to mention, we are using ice and water shield HD. So what this means is that it's rated for higher temperature. So if you have any kind of a metal roof, this is the right product to use. Unless you are using zinc, copper or cotton, which gets even hotter. In that case, uh, you should use Ice and Water Shield Ultra. Another uh, important thing, the regular Ice and Water Shield gives you only 90 days to get the roof on, whereas with HD you have 120 days. One thing I should mention for the installation, it was pretty simple once I got the hang of it. The only thing I should say for the rollback method is that it's pretty easy to lose your alignment. So when you're doing back roll, just make sure to stop every once in a while to make sure that your alignment is still in place. And with that, we are pretty much done. Oh, one more thing. On like B2 thin, you don't need to roll the ice and water shield. You just apply it, a bit of pressure with your hands, and that's sufficient. Now, we have another big installation coming up for the big house. But for now, this is everything, everything we have. So if you enjoyed this episode, consider giving us a like, subscribing to our channel, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.